Hello. Uh, we're going to take a few moments to talk about GitHub and cloning a project for which you are a contributor and how to use personal access tokens. It's going to try and go through pretty quickly, and there's a lot of places this can go wrong. So be patient. If you have any questions, uh, check with your teacher, and we'll get you sorted out. Uh, so first of all, we hope that you've already made a uh, GitHub account. I'm going to go ahead and sign in to my GitHub account here on GitHub. And um, I'll have to get my password here. And if it's been a while since you've signed in, I'm using my password manager here. If it's been a while since you've signed in, then it's going to ask you to verify if you've got two-factor authentication set up. So um, I've got that set up. So I'm going to go ahead and verify that. And I'm logged in now to GitHub. So I've got a user ID and a password that I can use to interact with GitHub uh, on the website. But if I want to be using the terminal to do things, if I'm going to be using um, Git and all sorts of things in the terminal, then I also need something called a personal access token. And so let's see how you get that set up. So um, if you go up to your uh, icon up here in the corner, how, where, whatever you're signed in as, and go down to settings, your personal account settings here, you click on that, and it's going to give you a bunch of account settings over here on the left side. Scroll down to developer settings and click on that. And then over again on the left side menu in developer settings, click on personal access tokens. And you can see uh, you may not have anything listed here. You can see that you'll have the option to generate a new token. And I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Generate new token. So I click on that. And it's going to ask you, okay, so it... Uh, we're going to use it instead of a password for Git over HTTPS. That's exactly what we're going to be doing. So I'll make a little note that this is for um, Polytechnic uh, CS. I'll just call it that. And um, the expiration, I'm going to let it expire in 90 days. You don't have to worry about losing your personal access token or having it expire because you can always generate a new one. But you will need it from time to time when you sign in. So what we're going to do is um, save that token someplace on our computer. And uh, you do need to click repo for the scope. Go ahead and click that top repo thing. If you don't give it a scope for the token, then it's not going to be able to do anything. You'll have a token, but it's not authorized to uh, confirm anything, to validate anything. So click on repo. You don't need any of these other things down here. Those are all for other things that we're not going to be doing. And then generate the token. You click on that. And one time and one time only, you get a chance to see that token right here. And it has a note that says, make sure to copy your personal access token. You won't be able to see it again. So I'm going to click on that little icon to copy it. It says copied. And then I'm just going to go over to Visual Studio Code where I've got a little text editor set up. And I'm going to paste that in there and then save that as my Git personal access token. And maybe I'll just put that on my desktop. Maybe that's not the most secure place to keep something like this, but my threat model is not super high. So uh, it's probably going to be okay just to keep it right there. And I'm going to come back and get that in a few minutes. So good. I think I've got my personal access token all taken care of here. Um, looks like, yeah, looks like I'm all set to go. So let me then go back over to our webpage here. And I'm going to go down to signing up for GitHub and just confirm that we've done all these things. So we've signed up for GitHub. We've got our personal access token. This is just a walkthrough on how we just did all of that. So you can use that later on if you need to remember how to do that. And then uh, now we're going to collaborate on a project with a group. In this first example, uh, you have already been approved, probably, uh, to collaborate with a team. There's a project called Hello World. Uh, at github.com, r right 5279 hello world. And what we're going to do is clone that project, make some modifications, and then push those projects back up to the main repository. We'll see how that works here. So first thing, you can follow the instructions here. There's a couple, place you can get, a couple places you can get these instructions. This is just reminding you with this strategy, we're going to clone, we're going to fetch, then we'll do these things and then push. Or if you go to this, if you go to github.com, just open up that new one there, github.com, r white 5279 hello world. If you go there, this is that repository that you are going to contribute to now. And it looks like there's, there, there is, there's a lot of stuff on this page for this project. But the main things that you want to focus on are, first of all, there's a readme file kind of explaining a little bit about this project. And the instructions are there. 
welcome in this introductory assignment. You'll need to clone the Hello World repository. We'll talk about how to do that in a second. Edit the project. Commit your edit to your local repository. Push your commit back to the server. So we'll double check this and see what's going on. There's a git pull there, so we'll see how this works. So I'm going to, first of all, clone the Hello World repository. How do you do that? Well, this green code here, it's very uh, very significantly colored because it's the, a primary reference here. You click on code, and there's a few things you can do. You could just download the project, but we really want to clone it. When you clone something, that means you have access to it. You're making a local copy of it. But that access is affiliated or connected to the main repository, the main project. So I'm going to click on this little copy icon where it says copied. I've just copied that access there for cloning. And back on my own computer now in the terminal, I'm going to get to a place. I'm going to move to a place where I want this repository to be. So I'm actually going to go over to, um, I guess I'll change on, onto my desktop. and. Um, I'll change into my AP Computer Science folder. I think I have a folder there. And maybe I'm going to uh, make a directory called git demo. And then I'm going to change into that git demo. And now I'm going to clone that repository. This is how you clone a repository. You say git clone. And then you paste in that address that we got from that link. We paste in that address that we got from the web page right here. They said HTTPS, and I copied that in there. So I'm going to clone that here and hit enter. And it says we're cloning into that project. And at this point, if I do an LS, I've got that Hello World folder. I've got that Hello World project on my own computer. And if I change into that Hello World project, if I go into that folder and do an LS-A, I can see that this is a Git project. And there's all sorts of stuff. There's a bunch of student directories in there. Maybe I'll change into the student directories and look and see what's in there. And there's a bunch of student directories. This is great. So this is a project that I've just cloned from GitHub. And presumably now I can do some work on this project. If we go back to, uh, if we go back to the assignment here, what else am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to edit the project by creating a folder identified by your class username, conjoin L, for example, not your GitHub username. And then in that folder, create a text document called Hello, It's Me. Okay, well, let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to go over and do that. So here I am in the terminal. Uh, I'm in the student directories terminal. So I'm going to make a new directory. I can do that either on the command line or I can actually do it on my computer. If I go to the desktop and APCS and Git demo, if I open that up, there's that little Hello World project. There's exactly what's going on here. This is the file browser's version of whatever's going on here in the terminal here. So maybe I'll just kind of uh, I'll set that aside for a moment. I'll put that right there. And I'm going to make a directory for uh, White, uh, Mr. White. Make Mr. White there. And you can see Mr. White just appeared down here. So that's my new directory. And I'm going to change into that Mr. White directory. And to create a file in there, you can just say touch. That creates a new file. And it's supposed to be called hello, it's me.txt. So when I do that and I look down here in the Mr. White folder, you can see I put that hello, it's me. And that's my assignment. All I'm doing is creating that directory and putting a little file in there. Now at this point, I need to... Let me double check the instructions here real quickly. I need to go in and do the usual commit your edit to the local repository. And you may remember how to do that. Um, let me go back here to our instructions. Remember, you add the project, that git add adds things, and then git commit. Let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and git add dot. And if I check my status, I can see what's going on. It looks like it's all set to go. My branch is up to date, and I've got a file stage there. And then I commit, git commit dash m uh, added my file as instructed. I'm putting a little message there. And if I check my status now, it looks like everything's all set. It's got a nice little message here that says your branch is ahead of the origin by one commit. Use git push to publish your local commits. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that. I'm going to git push, and it will try to push those things up onto the server. 
Now, it may be that it doesn't allow you to push that first time. In fact, I'm going to try something here. Uh, let me see if I can show this to you real quickly. I'm going to go ahead and revoke one of my tokens here. I'm deleting a token. I've used that token in the past to upload things. And if I try to um, push now, it's probably, yeah. Yeah, if I try to push now, notice it says I've got an invalid username or password. Authentication failed. And so typically what I'll do is if I'm working on something like this, what I'll need to do is I'll need to authenticate. I'm going to go ahead and uh, with the um, credentials that I used before. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that and change into that folder again. I'm launching a new bash session. So that'll kind of um, give me the opportunity to re-enter some of these things. So I'm going to go into my APCS, that git demo there. And I'm going to try, remember, I've got this project that's in here and I've committed. Everything's good. My status is good. Um, oh, uh, sorry. I have to change into hello world. And my status in here is I'm up to date. Oh, nothing to, my branch is up to date. Is everything good? What happens if I list student directories? Uh, Mr. White is there. I need to push that up to the um, to the server. So let me go ahead and try and do that. Get push. Okay, good. So now it's asking me for the username. So my username, and this is this may be what happens for you the first time you do it. My username is r white five five two seven nine, and my password is not my GitHub password. I need to go back and get that personal access token. So I'm going to copy that personal access token and plug that in here. And once it's set up, I just pasted it in there. Once it's set up, it's going to say, well, everything's up to date. You're already all set to go. I'm a little bit surprised by that, but let's go back and check. I thought it might have needed to. Oh, no, that's right. It was up to date. Um, you might get some things like I got before. And again, I'll make one more change here. Maybe I'll, um, I'll go in and I'll get rid of that Mr. White there, right? that directory. I don't need that. So I'm going to go into change into student directories and get rm, sorry, rm-r Mr. White. I'm going to actually take that out. And if I add everything and get commit m removed extra directory, so now I've got a new version of this. If I take a look at my status, it's going to tell me my branch is ahead of the origin up there. Now let's take a moment and look at that origin. Let's take a look on the Hello World project. If I refresh this page and look at the student directories, what's in there? There's my Mr. White folder added my file as indicated. So I was able to push that up there, but I just wiped that out on my local version here. So what happens if I try and push that up to the server? It's going to try and push it up to the server. And if I look over on the server now, well, it's still listed there. But when I refresh that page, Mr. White is gone. So I've just successfully pushed this new version of the project up on the server. One last thing. Sometimes somebody will have changed the project up on the server while you're in the middle of fixing things. So if that happens, just make sure you get pull to get the most recent, recent version of the project. Then you can make your changes and then get push, and then you'll be able to put it up there again. So I hope that helps. Again, if you have any questions, check with your instructors, and uh, we'll help you out. Thank you.